All right, folks. So for those of you who are have not found it yet or have not just haven't opened it up yet, um, we'll go through a little bit of this assignment and what I expect from yeah. Um sorry about that. Um so what we're looking for, that's what I was doing. I'm sharing screen. Um I swear, I am not sure if it's getting older or having kids and trying to do too many things at the same time, but I just get more and more scattered as my life goes on. Um, so for this week's lab, go to week two tab, and then there's there's a couple different files. So if you go to lab 02, uh, and actually just a note about the these overviews is the assignments, I'm usually going to put them in the order that I would recommend you do them in. Some of the homework questions won't make more as much sense until we have a little bit more practice with conversion. So I would work on the lab first because the lab's all about uncertainty um, and, and measuring things. So we have all the tools for that. Um, part one is this, this uh, website that's made by a guy named, a teacher from, I think from New York, um, named Mr. Palermo, who made this pretty good, um, virtual lab about uncertainty um and so one of the key aspects here is so first starters remember on uncertainty what we're trying to when we're writing down a measurement we're always going to write down the numbers you know with absolute certainty and then estimate one spot past that right so that's what the the goal is going to be for if you go down here to the procedure it has a bunch of links to specific pieces of glassware um, and your job is just to write down the measurement to the right number of dis digits. So for this first one, and so for each of these, there's two different um, measurements, although that one looks like it's been, that uh, vial's not linked. So for each of these, there's two for each of them, except for the graduated cylinder, for some reason that the uh, file's not right. Um, you're gonna go to the last decimal marking and then you're going to estimate one spot past that. So for this first one, which is a what's known as a burette, which is basically just a long tube with a valve at one end, and that has these markings along the way, so you can add a very specific amount of a, a solution. Um, so if we're looking at this, if you see, okay, 40 and 41. So we're counting upward. And we say, okay, if that's 40 and that's 39, that that means that and if we count here, one, two, three, four, five, we've got markings for the for each milliliter. And then we have markings for each tenth of a milliliter, which means we're going to report one spot past that. So you should be you're going to be writing down numbers for this particular piece of glass where you write down numbers all the way to the hundredth place, hundredth of a milliliter. So this one might be something along, you might look at and say, okay, well, it's definitely between 40.0 and 40.1, because we measure from the, from the flattest part of the meniscus. So you might look at that, and depending on your eyes and the, the quality of the picture, you might say that that's 40.08. And so you would write down all of those digits. Three that you know for sure are the four, the zero, first zero, the second zero, and then you're estimating the eight. So if your your eyes might look at that and say 40.07 or 40.09 or 40.10, if you think it's right to that line. All right. So that's all this lab is, is answering some questions about uncertainty and then making some measurements. And you're gonna be graded on, did you write down the right number of decimal places on your measurements? Um, one other concept to talk about here, let me make sure there's nothing else along the way, um, is the idea of precision versus accuracy. And this is something that comes up a lot in physics as well, and comes up a lot in engineering, um, but also in, in life sciences too. We, they don't uh, discuss it in detail as much, but it's a really important concept, is accuracy is how close you are to the real value. 
precision is just how close all your measurements are to each other. So I really like this dartboard analogy. If you're trying to hit the bullseye every time, high precision but low accuracy means all of your darts are close together, but none of them are close to the bullseye. Precise means tightly grouped. Accurate means close to the target or close to the real value. Right, so the, the gold standard, what we always want, but almost never get in lab, is high accuracy and high precision. But if you have, if you have um, high accuracy but low precision, if you take enough data points and you average them all out, you should get to the right number eventually. It might just take you a whole bunch of data points to get there. If you have high precision with low accuracy, you're never going to get the right number. If you, no matter how many how many darts you throw, they're always going to be close to each other over here. They're never going to hit a bullseye. But if you take this low precision with high accuracy, if you average out all of these darts, they're going to average out to be something close to the bullseye. All right. So that's your difference between when I say something is precise. That means it can mean a lot of things, but it can mean it has a lot of sig figs in your measurements. Not necessarily that it's accurate or close to the real number, just that it's carefully measured. Uh, everybody's getting the access denied measurements. Uh, thank you. It appears I did not hit publish. Um, and thanks for trying to tell me a while ago. Um, Luckily, with screen share, you still were seeing exactly what I was doing, but that if you hit refresh, you should be able to access it now. All right, so then the the rest of the lab, so this this part should not take you very long. So a couple of questions about accuracy versus precision, a couple of um, practice measurements with various pieces of glassware. Um, and then this lab quiz part, is just practice rounding and how to, you know, making sure that you can count your sig figs properly. It's practice with that is all, right? So this, this assignment should not take you very long. Um, the other two sections, lab part two, um, is basically you're gonna be doing the pre-lab for the lab that we would be doing in the second week of class in person because the pre-lab is basically the calculations that would go along with it. So I attached the procedure as well so you can see what you're supposed to be doing. Um, but basically is we're gonna, what you're going to be doing is using some measurements to figure out the density of a solid and the density of a liquid. And so the key here is just like speed is a distance divided by a time, um, and that's what I, I refer to as a combined unit. It's, I think the more technical name would be a derived unit. Speed is not an inherent unit you measure. You measure distance and time and put them together to get speed. Density is the same way, except density is the mass of an object divided by the volume of that object. And so what this, this lab procedure was doing is a couple different ways of finding the volume of an object and then you would weigh it by just putting it on, the, on a scale to get the mass of the object. And when you put those two numbers together, when you put mass divided by volume, you get a density. Right, so what the actual pre-lab looks like um, is it has you look at a couple of things and talk about accuracy versus precision a little bit. Um, it has you calculate, calculate standard deviation as well. You don't need to do this by hand. If you've taken stats before, you've had to calculate a standard deviation before by hand, right? And then it's once you do it once by hand, then, then Wynn or Larry or whoever you had for your teacher says, really what we do is you plug it into your calculator and you let your calculator do it, right? Um, you can use your calculator or actually Excel, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets actually has standard deviations built into it. So a quick um, tutorial on how to use Excel to do that is if you had several numbers, let's see if it'll let me just copy and paste into Excel, it may. 
Yeah. All right, so that didn't work. Um, but all we really want is the densities, right? So if I pull up the densities here, we want, there we go. That's what I want. Um, 1.45, 1.55, 1 1.6. I'm going to make up some different numbers. So it's not going to look exactly like yours. Um, 1.35, 1.22. Let's say so your numbers are going to look a little bit different than this when you plug them in if i want to know what the standard deviation is for that um i can tell excel to calculate it for me so excel does repetitive calculations very very well um, you just have to tell excel it's doing math you can also use excel as a calculator um, the easiest way to do this is to have excel just calculate standard deviation and if you if you start by typing an equal sign that's a signal to Excel that you're going to ask it to do some math. So you hit equals, and then you can actually just type in STDEV for standard deviation. And when you open parentheses, it just says right below, it says number one, number two, et cetera. You can just click and drag to select them. Close parentheses and hit enter. So you can calculate standard deviation by hand if you want to. Um, you can do it on your calculator if you want to. I, def I default to using Excel because I know Excel really well. Um, if you're going to keep going in the chemistry sequence, we're going to spend a lot of time in Excel, so it might be worth trying to get familiar with it. Um, but and so that's that's just a quick overview of how you could use Excel to help you here. It'll actually do averages too if you wanted to calculate the average. You just hit equals to tell Excel you want it to do math, type the word average and open parentheses and do the same thing, click and drag. And you get an average. It just does the same thing that you would normally do by hand by adding it all up and divide by the number of measurements. It just does it for you. All right, so if you don't have Excel, Google Sheets is free and does the same does the same things. The formatting looks a little bit different, but most of the same formulas are in there, at least the basic ones. Um, when you get to really specific things like making graphs and things like that, um, Google Sheets is not as good as Excel because it tries to think for you too much, um, but it works. It They work pretty well if you're just using it as a calculator. Um, and then the rest of this assignment here So two and three give you some fake data. They gave you some data that is similar to what you would be measuring if you were doing this yourself. So if you're trying to determine the density of vodka, you need, if we want to know density, we need to know mass and a volume. So it has, it says, okay, well, what is the, there's a procedure here that you can go through and look down if you scroll down to, um, it has you use, calculating the density of soda and using, um, but it's using the same method. The density is just gonna be, okay, well, we need to know what the volume is and the mass is. And the mass we're gonna measure just by weighing it. So it's just giving you the information you need. You have a starting volume with the burette and then you drain some of the vodka into an empty beaker and then you have a final volume. So the volume added is gonna be 9.62 minus 1.52. And, and don't you don't have to write all this down because all this should make sense when you if you read the procedure and say, okay, this is what we're doing. Read part B of the lab, use the numbers they give you to calculate the density. Three is read part C of the lab figure out what the density is. And it kind of walks you through, okay, well, what's the mass of the gold sample? What's the mass of the water? What's the mass of the water after it's been displaced? Um, there's a, it, A through E are basically walking you through the procedure of part C. So use the numbers that they give you and the procedure that's attached 
And that's going to be your lab assignment for this week, or to do that um, virtual lab where you look at and measure the numbers and then do figure out the density of those two, those two mixtures. All right, so I know I went over that fast and you probably, especially since I had not published it before, you guys haven't read the procedures yet or have any idea what's going on. So give that a go. Um, I'll stay on here to answer any questions when you get there. Um, I believe that's everything you need to get through there, but if, if I missed anything or if you need any clarification, just unmute and ask. Um, and as before, I'll open up some breakout rooms in case anybody wants to jump into a breakout room and work in small group. Otherwise, you can just work through it on your own, ask questions when you have questions. Sound good? All right, get after it. So I just had a quick question. Um, the is it it's like a web page are we supposed to screenshot it and like mark it up as a pdf document to turn it in or are we supposed to make our own you can you can do that you or you can just um write your answers on a piece of binder paper okay um that's any of those options are fine you can screenshot okay. it mark it up do it in a word document write it on paper it's all fine okay cool thank you thank you